Let's talk about what we learned in in applying Jung's model in coaching people through relationships. Um, what was your experience? Well, I remember you showing me when I first started doing love coaching years ago. Um, you showed me, and I had my book Let Love In came out, and it was all about like more cognitive behavioral. And uh, you said you should check this out. And I, I heard of Jung, but I never heard of Anima Animus. And mm. you showed me a video on it, and I said. Oh, Rob, can you teach a class with me for my, the single people in my group uh, about this? And as soon as you introduced it, people were blown away. I was blown away by it. And so for me, it just takes this whole dating tip uh, behavior, thinking positive and, and building up the ego aspect of love coaching and really take it to another level where you're really working on the soul level and helping people really have meaningful connection with themselves, their own soulfulness, so they can connect with someone else. And I just think it, for me, it was so beautiful. And our clients loved it because we started applying active imagination and visualization mm -hmm. for them to connect with this archetype and see it in dreams. And it just became a more a whole, whole rounded experience to approach love that they weren't conscious of. And that's the key. Yeah. I think a lot of people try to make rational decisions in love and try to figure out why do I keep hitting these same patterns? Mm -hmm. But the animus uh, in dreams or anima really gives them the clues and gives yeah. them the information that's missing on a conscious level. Yeah. <clears throat> I was surprised at, uh, at be because we were trying to stay pretty close to Jung's model uh, of individuation, of shadow work, of uh, anima animus, of but society has evolved, right? People have changed the the norms of romantic relationship and how it's done, courtship and uh, bonding and pairing. Uh, it's it's changed completely. Now a lot of things are up in the air. Uh, but what I found was, uh, and this was surprising on both uh, on both aspects, that the model still works. Mm -hmm. This, the deeper psychic structures are still in place. Uh, people still project the same way. They still go through the shadow work in very similar ways as Jung describes. Um, but the anima animus appears different. Mm. It, it's not just a, the traditional woman or the traditional man. That's right. And of course, he was working with people in, or started working with people in the Victorian era and then, you know, up into the, I think he, he passed away in 61 or somewhere, some sometime around there. Uh, but, um, yeah, things have changed a lot. Um, and, you know, relationships are different. There's, uh, well, there was always been gay relationships, but now it's more, uh, more people are more out and, and living the free, that their true self versus, yeah. you know, trying to conform to society and making that hot, hidden because 100 years ago it was yeah. really not as acceptable. Um, and now it's more more welcoming and there's more uh, liberal society and then also transgender. So we're dealing with a lot of different types of uh, feminine and masculine. And also women are taking on more masculine roles in business and uh, maybe leading the household while the man stays at home or, yeah. you know, helps the woman uh, with projects. And, and, uh, and so it's a different dynamic. Women are kind of stay, coming into power. So when we think about the animus, it has a different quality than the knight on the shining horse that's going to come and the white horse and rescue you like uh, Prince Charming. Uh, it's actually, you, it becomes a force that the woman can harness and use in the world and use it and balance out the relationship yeah. where the husband isn't the sole container for all her masculinity, which is in the Victorian times, you see the woman like, oh, I can't step over the wet, the wet water, you know, put the coat down and everything was so like... Um, you know, women can't lift mm -hmm. things and all that stuff. And now, like, we're, we're just so different. So these social roles that men, fat, masculine and feminine uh, ideas that anima animus were kind of talked about in different Jungian circles, now we, we're, we're going to a different level. Yeah, so what, what persists, what's still there intact, is that uh, these are universal archetypal forces. So the what works for us in, in in applying it in a coaching model has been this idea that they're more 
like um, the yin and yang, mm. the, these kind of universal forces that humans embody in a sense, right? We, we're cr created out of that model of the universe in, in, that operates on this duality, but the way individuals manifest it and experience it is very unique. Mm. And Jung continually talks about this, that there is a tension between our individual experience of the world and the universal archetypal elements. Mm. Uh, they're not going to be identical in each one of us because we're individuals. Mm -hmm. So we're individuals playing out universal patterns.